Bit of a skirmish down here. Blossom seems to have snuck his way into the brush, and he is level six. He's got a lot of burst damage. That's going to do it, definitely. First blood comes in. Doesn't even need to use Cataclysm. Yeah, it's like in full white flag mode for the first 30 minutes. Walking up, but doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be free objectives. They've caught Baker, and he doesn't have his stopwatch this time around. The damage coming in. He flashes away. They can't finish him off. Even with the stun, he's going in. Penny, he might have to trade his life for it, though. That's going to be one for one so far. And now SKT, they're still on the chase. Lots of low members on the side of Jin Air. But how the game is playing out. And watch the replay. Remember that Jin Air is looking for a delay. They're looking for three items, Tristana, before they even get out of bed in the morning. They start walking up. Great shockwave. Two in a row have been on point. Yeah. Faker falls low, and predictably, if you get the chance to say X killed Faker in the chat, you want it to read that way. Teddy does, but second time he's locked up by Blossom. His flash was attempting to be a flash into the rocket jump. Was optimistic, let's say, at best. I don't think that was worth it. And the Mountain Drake does Sorry, go the way. So on just gives it up. Question being, can they steal? No, is going to be the answer. But they engage out of justice. Not in the greatest spot. Has to flash away. But now Blossom is getting in there. Good shock wave. He's buying so much time. He's still alive in the back line. And the stuns now are going to be coming out here. Wolf looking for the re-engage rate. Very low. Finally, they trade one for one. But eventually, Wolf going to go down. But this is not ending anytime soon. Faker and Bang, the two carries versus two very low health members trying to run away here. And Justice goes the right way. He manages to juke. He gets onto the speed up as well from the Rift Scuttler. He'll Whoa. get away. Omti also. A nice escape. A two for one. But you'll notice in the top side, that they did gold lead out of seemingly nothing with how the game has gone recently. And they're trying to get oh a second turret. Oriana's in the top lane. They're going to engage. Goodbye, Wraith. They're just going to get off this rift at this moment. That's going to be the second turret going down, too. And they're looking for more here. Justice in an awkward spot. They're going to jump onto him. He doesn't have his flash anymore. SKT are running the train down middle, and they're getting kill after kill. Bangy Faker. Piglet and Pumandu. The aggression is back with Blossom, and it's just a really smart passage to play. The first turret, indefensible. The second turret, they make a smart read. They know summoners are down, and Oriana is side laning one of the worst side lane champions because she has no ability to actually close the distance. Great read coming through that was not an award but they had earlier vision. They made the read that he'd be in there. So they're trying to create something here. Uh, Four man actually down here. They're going for the realm warp underneath the turret. It's going to be a four man shockwave, but it doesn't matter. That's four people going to take out the Oriana. She still doesn't have her flash. Now they're trying to disengage here. Teddy has so much room with the red buff. Did they take this too far is the question. Teddy, well, Blossom really doesn't care. He walks up to the enemy team, clears a, a buff, and now they're going to jump onto the Umti here. They want to take that smite away. Still, the stopwatch left available. That's going to be the three man cataclysm. Getting pretty low though is Blossom, and still no kill. Still Shockwave's no still results. up as well. They're trying to get somebody here. They're getting running after Wraith, who does have his own stop. Unbreakable up here. Finally, he's going to go down, and they're going deep into the base here trying to get on top of umti there's the shockwave it's not that much damage teddy in the back line they finally get umti there but teddy he's looking for bang bang getting way too low here that's gonna be one now it's all up to faker faker versus everybody he's got the support of untara here is it gonna be enough teddy in there just yet. It's a three-map Baron. And look at how fast it goes down. Smite comes in. They don't even need it. Or less clear for SKT. They make the if they pull the wrong trigger right now, things can turn around. Oh boy, look at him. He's, he's just, just walking up to them. What is he doing? He's gonna almost go down here. Untara is gonna bite him in the butt, and that's gonna be the end of his life. Let's see what Jin Air decides to do in their last stand. They have to go for a fight here. Looking for Bang, they get the knockup here. Now Blossom in the front, but he's got the Gargoyle Stone Play the four-man knockup from Wolf. He's looking to end this game now. Baker on the right side, trying to go 1v2. He stays alive. Bar is picking up all the kills in the end. Finally, Faker goes down. Is it gonna matter though? They are staying alive in the back here. Both the carries have gone down for SKT. Got so Watch many the minions. minions as well. They're going in, and Teddy, he's not cleaning the minions. He's trying to get the kills. Untara wants to get the Nexus here. He's quite tanky. I don't think but he can Teddy do it. Doing, it's gonna be a couple more hits. 
but it's not going to be enough himself. He finally goes down, and they keep the Nexus alive for now. How does it keep summons the spirit of the previous Jinnah versus SKT match? Because you'll watch this replay and say, wait, I remember stuff like this at the end. Remember that that was the first series I've ever remembered as. Let me point out the headbutt pulverize that you said. Yeah. Was the definitely the big ticket moment of that fight. Remember that all three games Teddy ended with no boots. All three games, he actually had six damage items. It's the first time in competitive play I have ever seen that happen. The ultra late game is not being received here. SKT focused on the fight. They were not able to close the distance on Wings Nexus. <laughs> they want to do it. They're going to rip warp in. They're just going to attack the Nexus. Can they do it, though? The fight map shockwave. They're trying to keep it alive, but Utara's going to get it in the back. 37 minutes. They get the win that they were looking for. Congratulations, SKT. They did not want this to go to 94 minutes for sure. What a hype ending. and. A lot of SKT fans will hope that you could just stitch in what happened in this game to the previous time they couldn't end the game and make it into a 95-minute victory. That didn't have to happen here. We did not go that far. Heroic defense by Junior Green Wings, but not enough. SKT made the read that this time they could end the game. No Azir turrets, no problem. They close it out, and SK Telecom T1, just like in that first series, win game one. They actually did it. I was getting scared after that Nexus didn't die the first time. Justice trying to prove that Azoriana was worth something with the Fantastic Shockwave to delay it until the second chance. But either way, that is going to be game one. I feel like I saw a small little smirk there on Teddy's face, kind of enjoying the way that game ended. I just love how SKT versus Jinair games have delivered in the biggest way in 2018. The longest, the best, the worst, the most. It has been an ordeal. The fourth game, no different in this epic streak of matches. Jinair's plan of delay was stuffed.